Oh. Hi everyone, welcome back to A Better Biomed. Today I've got a topic that might be a little bit boring to some, but if you're going to be a, a more senior technician or a biomed manager, you're gonna have to know about this stuff. So you might as well get used to it right now and start learning about it. Uh, today we're gonna learn about contracts. Now contracts is a very complex subject so we're not gonna go into a huge amount of detail, just a general overview so you know what type of contracts that you can look forward to and look forward to dealing with. So, I've compiled a list of four main types of contracts. Now there are other types of contracts with lots of details, but there are four main types of contracts that as a regular Biomed, Biomed 3, there's four types that you're gonna come in contact with. So the first type of contract is going to be a reagent rental contract. And you're going to see these type of contracts usually around laboratories. Um, and what it is, is if you order your reagents from a particular company, usually the OEM vendor, you will get the lab analyzer either free or for a discounted rental price. And it's called the reagent rental contract. Now there's a lot of details on these reagent rental contracts and they're always changing because the technology to laboratory analyzers is constantly evolving very quickly. The next type of contract you're going to see in all sorts of areas of the hospital is called a consumable or a product placement contract. Now because of, uh, uh, I think it was the Dodd-Frank law. Uh, it used to be, back in the day, uh, a vendor would take equipment and they would place it in your facility and they would just kind of take their hands off it and say, hey, it's not mine, it's not yours, but here you go, it's for free. And uh, because of, I think it's the Dodd-Frank law, uh, vendors are no longer allowed to give you a piece of equipment permanently for free. It had something to do with fraud, embezzlement, and uh, the whole capital capital equipment clause. So anyway, a consumable or product placement contract, it's basically you will buy X amount of their consumables and in exchange, they will either give you a piece of equipment and say, hey, it's ours, we own it, but you can have it right now or they will uh, sell it to you at a, a steep, steep discount. And I think that's usually what happens, is uh, they'll sell it to you for like 100, 200 bucks, something like that, because they have to assign a dollar value to that piece of equipment for them to transition it from their inventory to yours. But uh, it's usually X amount of years, you're gonna say, I'm gonna order so many consumables. And this could be uh, like the bear huggers or the patient blanket warmers, there's a tube that goes up to a inflatable blanket and you use it to cover your patients to keep them warm, prevent hypothermia. And um, if you buy X amount of those blankets from that vendor, you can just call them up and say, hey, I would like you know two or three or 20 more bear huggers and they'll just ship them to you. They'll drop ship them and uh, you know in a week you'll have 20 more bear huggers. And uh, that's because you said that you'd buy X amount of consumables from them and they keep records of that. The next contract that we're going to talk about is called a first look contract. Now we're getting into the big one, the big money contracts. First look is the ones that benefit Biomed the most. And the reason they benefit Biomed the most is because when you get a first look contract, it means that you have to have at least one trained individual on your staff and that trained individual will go and they will have the first look at a piece of equipment when it fails and they will usually resolve it and if they cannot resolve it then they can phone for help and a uh, OEM technician will come in and they will help you out and it's called the first look contract now that helps biomeds out for a couple different reasons one it can get us better pay first look contracts can also uh, encourage biomed management to offer more training and advanced training at that because this is usually high dollar stuff 
Now, one of the things I can tell you about first look contracts is uh, it really benefits the guys over in radiology, x-ray teams. Uh, the imaging teams, they will get first look contracts on a lot of equipment and the hospital gets very steep discounts to the contract for having them on the staff. As an example, in one hospital that I used to work at, there was an MR technician who worked with us and that guy could pretty much sit on his keister all day. He didn't have to do nothing. And I'm guesstimating that he was being paid around $120,000 to $130,000 a year to fix x-ray. But it was a first look contract. Here's the kicker. The contract had over a $180,000 discount to the hospital just for having a first look contract instead of a full service contract or a Cadillac contract. So this guy could just sit there on his butt all day and watch YouTube videos. And honestly, he was saving the hospital money just because he's still breathing. It's that crazy. But first look contracts, they benefit the hospital because you have that OEM support. And at the same time, you've got somebody on staff that usually knows what they're doing for this very advanced piece of equipment. So first look contracts don't necessarily have to be for x-ray equipment. It can be for laboratory, laboratory analyzers, stuff like that. Um, I've seen first look type contracts on surgical tables. So first look contracts, they're, uh, they're a tool. They get you steep discounts. And I would say they're one of the most valuable contracts that you can get. The next type of contract that we have is called a full service contract. It is exactly what it sounds like. A full service contract is you have any problems, you call the vendor up and within a certain amount of time, usually 24 to 48 hours, they have to be on site and they have to try and resolve the problem within 24 to 48 hours. Now full service contract, Cadillac contracts are very expensive. Now one of the examples of the full service and Cadillac contracts would be the Da Vinci robot. No matter what, you're gonna have a Da Vinci robot under first look contract, or uh, under a first full service contract. And the reason being is because they're crazy expensive. Da Vinci's are the most inefficient medical equipment out there because, I mean, you have to think that the device is like two, two and a half million dollars, and the contract for those stupid things is like 180 some thousand dollars per year. They're very expensive. And uh, because of the liability, if you can imagine you have a robot that is, there's no um, direct physical connection between the physician and the robot itself. And because of that, there's a huge amount of liability. Da Vinci just was settling uh, lawsuits just what, a year or two ago, something like that. It was crazy high risk and they got sued very badly. But Da Vinci is a high risk and very high high level of training required. And the thing is, is, when you are a technician for something like a DaVinci, with every software rollout, you have to be able to go in and be trained for that software revision. Because if you're not trained for that software revision and you're working on that robot, you're wrong. And the same thing goes for some other devices. Um, let's say uh, heart-lung machines. Uh, heart-lung machines are one of these things that can fall in between first look, full service, and uh, uh, technician-based uh, contracts. Heart-lung machines, I, unless you have a, a lot of them and you have some really skilled technicians, I would say they should always be under contract. It's very high risk. A heart-lung machine is incredibly high risk. No matter what, you have to be OEM to install new software on the stupid thing. No matter what, you want to connect a laptop to that heart-lung machine, and you want to change around the format of the screens or something, or let's say reload software, you have to be OEM to do it. So you want to push out a new software update, you have to be OEM. They won't give it to any of us. So those things, I highly encourage them to be under first look contract. A lot of hospitals don't have them under any contract. But if you have extra machines, by all means, don't have them under contract. But they're what, uh, 200 to 400 and some thousand dollars per heart lung machine? Heart lung machine, by the way, if you guys don't know, it's, it's one of those machines that will um, takes the blood from the patient and it will clean the blood and it will oxygenate it and it will circulate it 
and then it sends it back to the patient. And the heart-lung machine can do things like stop the heart um, by using um, cardioplasia drip. Um, they use the perfusionist, will stop the heart with the cardioplasia, and then they will pump the blood manually. Um, well, with the pump, but uh, they use it for open heart surgeries and all sorts of stuff. So that's a heart-lung machine. It's a device that basically takes over for your lungs and your heart, and it keeps you alive. It's the, the epitome of life support equipment. It is your life when they're working on your heart. But anyway, uh, coming back to the contracts, a full service contract, the thing about full service contracts is that they're usually not economical and they're almost never economically worth it. And what I say by that is if you have a full service contract and you were to actually tally up every single work order from that full service contract from the day it started to the day it ended it is very very rare for the travel time the parts and the labor to actually equal what you actually paid for the contract it's kind of also a convenience fee and a risk fee but full service contracts are usually not economically worth it it's very rare. I mean, you'd have to have something incredibly expensive go wrong in order for a full service contract to actually pay for itself. So what are, what are some of the reasons that people decide to go for contracts if they're not really always economical? Well, one of them is risk. It's you are now putting the risk of the patient's life in the hands of the OEM. If he did his PM wrong, or if there's a, um, if there's a recall or something like that on that piece of equipment, the OEM will take care of it in due time uh, because it's his responsibility. Uh, the second reason that people will use contracts is manpower. Let's say you're in a more remote location and you don't have enough biomeds in the vicinity to handle all your equipment. It does happen. Uh, manpower can be an issue. Let's say the hospital doesn't want to fund a whole nother person. And because of that, you're like, fine, okay. Well, you guys want to run a cardiovascular operating room. You're going to have some of this equipment on contract. That's all there is to it. Um, you don't want to pay for training, and you don't want to pay for an extra person to do it. Contracts. So that brings me to my next point. Training. Sometimes you have to be constantly trained in order to work on this equipment. As I mentioned, with the heart-lung machines, the Da Vinci robot, for every software revision that rolls out, you have to be trained for that software revision in order to touch that particular model of a robot. So training is also one of the big issues. Training can be very expensive, so it's cost prohibitive. The other thing, and one of the biggest reasons for getting some of these contracts, is proprietary tools and knowledge. Sometimes the vendor will not offer training for equipment. And that's part of the whole thing with that right to repair that's going on is they want vendors to both be able to supply parts and training for every device they sell. They don't. They don't provide service manuals. Believe it or not, many devices that we work on do not have service literature. You won't find it. You won't get it. So we have to use our intuition and uh, sometimes forums and other biomeds to figure out what the problem is. But that is uh, one of the other reasons that people go to these type of contracts. If you guys have any questions, please leave a note down in the, the notes down below. I will read them and I'll get back to you all as soon as I can. I'm sure I left out some stuff. If you can't tell, this is very ad lib. I'm reading some of my notes off a of DeWalt manual. Okay? So uh, I'm just shooting out a little bit of knowledge because uh, I talk to other technicians and other people in the hospital about this kind of stuff all the time and today was one of those days where I kind of started talking to somebody about their options for contracts and I thought hey that might make a pretty good video for you guys so if you have any other questions about some of these contracts I know I missed some it happens it's all ad-lib but if you have any other suggestions for the types of contracts please leave it in the notes down below and uh, I'd love to see what you guys say about them thanks for watching guys